San Francisco, city of space and light beside the immense Pacific. medium of revelation. Through its moods, noon brilliance, first light, dawn. Through the illusion of substance, snow, charred wood, stone, And the magic of a place in a moment, he conveys universal experience. by 10 view camera, 20 holders, four lenses, one Cook convertible, one 10 inch wide field actar, one nine inch Degor, one six and three quarter inch wall and sack wide angle. Item, one seven by 17 special panorama camera with a Protar 13 and a half inch lens and five holders. Item, one four by five view camera, six lenses, 12 inch Collinear, eight and a half inch Apolentha, Nine and a quarter inch Apotessa, four inch wide field Acta, Dalmeyer Adon Telephoto. Item, one Hasselblad camera outfit with 38, 60, 80, 135, and 200 millimeter lenses. Item, one Contaflex 35 millimeter camera. Item, two Polaroid cameras. Item, three exposure meters one SEI, and two Westons, in case he drops one. Item, filters for each camera, K1, K2, minus blue, G, X1, A, C5, and B, F, 85B, 85C, light balancing, series 81 and 82, two tripods, one light, one heavy, lens brush, stopwatch, thermometer, level, focusing magnifier, Focusing claw, Hycolite strobe portrait outfit, 200 feet of cable, special storage box for film. Item, one ancient eight passenger limousine with five by nine foot camera platform on top.
The disciplines and standards of a musician lie behind Ansel Adams' approach to photography. Like every good photographer, he pre-visualizes his final print right here on the ground glass of his view camera, or with a miniature camera, right on his inner eyelid. Excitement over the image now gives way to precise technical reasoning. With a light meter of this type, he can measure the brightness of very small or very distant areas. Darkest shadow, eight candles per square foot. Light on wet sand, 2,000 candles per square foot. Place shadow on zone one, high value will fall on zone nine. Normal minus development indicated. By such measurement, he can estimate what exposure he needs now and what development later. By the delicate balance between exposure and development, he attains the tonal range he wants in his final image. I keep a record of everything. Film, lens, filter, lens extension, lens aperture, shutter setting. Above all, where I've placed important values on the exposure scale and what development I will use to attain them in the negative. The negative looks adequately sharp all over. Shadow density is exactly on the right zones. A little camera flare helped the shadow density as expected. All set. Fingers dry. Dust brushed off the negative. Here goes for a test exposure. through as expected and the high values are okay. Once Adams has achieved the print he wants, he is able, simply by controlling exposure and processing, to make from one negative hundreds of fine prints in a day. By this technique, he can produce portfolios of original prints which are in themselves works of art. Translating his photographs into fine reproductions, Adams works closely with engravers and printers. Such printed reproductions often approach the quality of his original prints.
Photography to Ansel Adams is a profession as well as an art, and his standards are as high as those of an architect or engineer. On industrial or other assignments, he may sometimes return many times to get what he's after. He takes over a client's problem from the moment it is broached to him to the moment of its final presentation to the public. Adams also serves as consultant to photographic manufacturers in the development of new materials and processes. A friend working in his garden becomes the subject for a Polaroid film test. In portraiture, with the same respect for the dignity of the individual, he photographs a little Papago girl, a Franciscan missionary, a writer, an historian. a musician, a young girl, the photographers Edward Weston, and Alfred Stieglitz. To Ansel Adams, ever since he made his first photograph, Yosemite Valley has meant much more than cliffs, waterfalls, trees.
great rocks of Yosemite are the very heart of the earth speaking to us. Alfred Stieglitz said, art is the affirmation of life. And life, or its eternal evidence, is everywhere. Expressions without doctrine, my photographs are presented here as images of the endless moments of the world. 